We have been bamboozing around here. I've got a couple of the bamboo printers. I don't even remember what kind they are at this point, but they're making stuff for me. So let's talk about it. Well, I'm told that it's an X1E and an X1 Carbon is what I have. I believe you. Yeah, that looks about right. It doesn't matter to me. They're, bam they're made by bamboo. That's what I know. And they run. And all the other stuff, I've got software that remembers for me. Or it's printed on the machine, right? So in the last video when we talked about it, I didn't have a lot of print time on them. But at this point, I am around 1,200 hours or so of printing. So we've seen the errors that can happen. And it's just like any other printer. Sometimes you can have things go wrong. They're not completely foolproof. But I would say in general, they are pretty reliable. The one issue that I was having last time, and I did talk about, was that some of my parts were not coming out flat. And there's still a teeny, tiny bit of bow to some of these parts, but this is because of how I've designed them. In particular, this one having a relatively flat edge on here, these hard corners, even though they're not totally hard, I did put a radius on them, that transitions into a round portion right here, and as it cools, this pulls the entire thing so i tried lots of different beds i tried uh, increasing the temperature we got the the engineering version so that it had the heated chamber inside and what really helped was the heated chamber i cranked it up to i think it's 45 or 50 celsius with the petg which is usually not needed but we got these extra thick g10 plates from lightyear the composite build plate so uh, it, it is also magnetic, as you can see on the bottom, it's the magnetic side, and then we got G10 on the top. These actually didn't solve it in the first couple of prints. I cleaned them just fine, but you really have to season these just a little bit, and by seasoning it, I mean you run the same part a few times. So the first one actually lifted up. The second one bowed a little bit and lifted up. By the time I got to the third one, we were smooth sailing. These things grip. And I could turn up the heat a little bit on them, maybe to have them grip a little bit better, but it seems to be working just fine. I've got some sliced files. It does not pull up. This plate is so stiff that it does not allow the part to bow and lift the plate because that's the problem that I was having was that in either of these positions, the plate itself was just lifting and that was where the bow was coming from was that the plate just wasn't stiff enough to prevent it. it the part was stronger so we got it solved these are just fan adapters for things that i make and it works beautifully so i've got one printer that does essentially nothing but these sorts of parts out of pet petg for me i could all use uh, also use a few things like abs in that uh, h IPS, I think, is another high temperature one. I really haven't gotten into those ASA, stuff like that. PETG seems to work fine. And I also don't have to worry about fumes from it. So I'm kind of sticking with that. Works great. On the other one, the uh, carbon. Yep, it's the carbon. I pretty much exclusively use these textured PEI plates now. And these are double sided. They sometimes don't release very well. Um, it kind of depends. They're a little easier to damage, in my opinion. But as you can see, on like a flat style, a non-textured, this PLA would just come right off. And once you get the PLA coming off, it comes up pretty easy like this. And this was just a print that came, you know, in the printer or whatever. Uh, you can't see with the white, but the textured plate actually leaves a really, really cool sort of texture on the bottom. It makes it look like a molded part almost, but I've really enjoyed these textured plates. It works out extremely well for my needs. Uh, PLA, PETG, as long as it's not something that is, you know, trying to bow on there, but everything else, it works great. So I've gone to these particular plates for pretty much everything and it works. This is some little game, I guess. I, I've got these rolls. My, my silver machine, my carbon machine is actually fully just printing for another job right now. A local university, they needed me to make some stuff. So it is just constantly churning out parts for them for the next, let's see, we've been doing it for three weeks. I probably got three more weeks. We just hit the halfway point last night on the job. So it's uh, unfortunately not, I, I can't use it for my own stuff now. So I'm thinking about getting a third. I don't have any experience with the other ones, but I hear the P 
P1P or something like that is a pretty good one. It doesn't have an enclosure, which is really dusty around here. I don't know if, yeah, I don't know if I, I really want to get one that doesn't have an enclosure, but it's like half the price. So I don't know if y'all have any experience with it. You let me know in the comments and otherwise I'm really enjoying these bamboo printers. They are pretty expensive. It's not something that the average person is going to want to or need to spend money on, honestly. But at the same time, if you print a lot, if you have reasons to print, then it is something that I think you would really enjoy. If you've got a lot of printers already, if you're willing to spend more money on something that is potentially more reliable, you know, if you're running Prusas, then you're probably not going to see much of a difference. But I really like the fact that these aren't bed slingers. And by bed slinger, I mean a, a typical printer, most Prusas, the old style Prusas at least, the bed goes this way, the head goes this way, and up and down. So when you start getting big heavy objects on there, not necessarily this, but slightly larger ones, what happens is that you will either sling the item off the bed or it will start to wobble and then you'll catch your nozzle. Or the, There's a lot of problems that can happen with bed slingers. Um, they're cheap to make, I suppose, but just having that weight going back and forth, the bed by itself, of course, is going to be a lot of weight, especially when it's glass. It limits your ability to go fast in so many different ways. And so this one, I think they're called Core XY or Core Cork C, I've heard people say. I don't know. Let me know in the comments how you say it. The bed just goes up and down, pretty much. And then the head of the machine, which is much lighter, does all your X and Y. And I, I think if I'm going to choose, I'm always going to go with that. And I would also choose direct drive. And that's what the bamboos are. So I really enjoyed it. I would not give them a 10 out of 10 because I really think that they need to have positional feedback on their stepper motors instead of an open loop. That's more of my opinion. But everybody is still stuck on essentially the same software that was open sourced a decade plus ago and nobody has made the jump. There are some aftermarket drivers out there, but you can't just retrofit them to machines like this. So in my opinion, Bamboo needs to step it up. If they're gonna have a next level printer, the next level that they go to needs to have encoders on their steppers so that you never have a misprint pretty much. Well, at least like a skip step. I was having skip steps in this uh, for a small period of time. I've got them around here somewhere. And I don't know what happened. And then they stopped happening. Maybe I was pushing the speed too much or something like that. But it was always in one direction. And then it would come back as well. So we'd have a layer shift and then it would shift right back. And we just have that one little area. I don't really understand it. Uh, when you have a lightweight head like that, how that could happen. At any rate, it's not doing it anymore. It, does, it hasn't seemed to happen again. So I'm not sure what it was. It wasn't the belt skipping, I know. So yeah, and I couldn't get any help on the internet or from Bamboo. It is what it is. So again, I think they should have encoders on them. But other than that, it's a great printer. I can highly recommend them if it is in your budget range. And they do have some smaller ones now as well that are a little more budget friendly. Seems to be pretty well tuned. So I do like it. Let me know in the comments if you have one, if you like them, or if there's another one that you would suggest that isn't bottom of the barrel. I don't want to go down the route of the Sovols again. For 300 bucks, yeah, it's great, but you're getting a $300 printer and they have problems that $300 printers have. So honestly, just having the enclosure around them for me and the drafts and using PETG so much that it's been worth it. It's been definitely worth it. So there you go. A little bit of ranting and talking about the bamboos. I would give them like a thumb and a half at least. I don't want to give them two thumbs up because they are expensive, but we're almost there. There we go. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good day. You've made it to the end of the video. Hopefully that means you liked what you saw. If you want to help out the channel, you can like, subscribe, and definitely comment down below. We would like to hear new ideas from you, so be sure you let us know what you'd like to see. There are some other suggestions probably floating by my head right now that you can check out. And otherwise, we appreciate your support and your help growing the channel.